What's up, y'all? My name is Patrick, representing Team Instinct. And today I'm joined by my co host and rival, representing Team Valor, Vince Chapman. What up? Uh, don't know where Mr. Jimmy Bones is over there representing Team Mystic, like we would expect Team Mystic to not show up for appointments, things like that. No, I'm just kidding. He's a good guy, and there's nothing wrong with Team Mystic except everything. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the sixth episode of Join the Rivalry. Uh, it's been a while since we met. We had some scheduling conflicts last week, uh, which actually worked out pretty good for me because I had to work that night, and I was ah. tired. So I got to go take me a nice little nap. So that was that Sweet. was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, um. Anyway, what you been up to the last couple of weeks, Vince? Uh, not a lot. Um, well, I say not a lot. I mean, it's always busy around here. Um, um, last week was 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 pretty cool. Um, actually, um, that we didn't have this, but um, be for the reason that uh, I actually played in a bluegrass festival. I'm a bluegrass musician, and so um, that's where I was last Thursday evening. I uh, I didn't know that about you. What do you play? Yeah. I, I, uh, well, I originally, I started learning, uh, the mandolin, um, uh-huh. as, as the first instrument I ever learned to play is the mandolin. From there I branched out and I played the, uh, I can play the guitar, both acoustic and electric. Uh, I can play a little bit of drums and a little bit, little bit of piano. Um, and, uh, my secondary, uh, instrument, if you will, is, uh, the bass. I play it about half as much as I play, uh, the mandolin. So, uh, uh-huh. I think I knew you played bass, but yes. I, I definitely didn't know the rest of that. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, that's that's kind of the highlight of my past couple weeks is that bluegrass festival. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, cool. So you do that? You do? Uh, are you still training for that Ninja Warrior? I am. I am. Today was this morning was Grip Strength Thursday, so my uh, my forearms are feeling it. Yeah. I, uh, through my electrician classes, I, I do a lot of squeezing my hands together to cut mm-hmm. things. And I, I'm, my wife was, of course, I don't know, you know, when, when your wife tells you something like, oh, you're strong, it's like, is she telling me the truth or is she just flattering me? I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but she did tell me that she, she, uh, she noticed that one time when I grabbed her hand, she's like, man, your grip's getting strong. And so, uh, yeah, I don't know. Again, it could just be flattery. We'll find out. <laughs> yeah, who knows? So uh, that's really cool. I saw that that cool little video you posted of your your kid jumping through those plastic bins. Yeah, yeah. That was funny you. Thing, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Funny thing, he set those up by by himself. I mean, I was yeah. I was sitting in a rocking chair and and happened to look up from my phone, and 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 he had these all lined out, and he was getting ready to do this, and I was like, shoot, I got to record this because this is going to be <laughs> awesome. So that's all. Awesome. Yeah, I I like it when my kid tries to mimic me. Unfortunately, most of the time when he's trying to mimic me, it's playing a video game, which I mean, <laughs> hey, it's great. I like sure. that. But occasionally I wish it was, you know, something a little more active or I don't know. I guess yeah. it just comes with being a dad. You uh, it it may, helps me think of how my parents must have felt when i was a kid and all i wanted to do was play video games and it just aggravated the snot out of them (laughs) (laughs) while he him being interested in video games doesn't aggravate me because obviously i play a lot of video games sometimes i do wish that he was more interested in in outdoor things than he is but then i i think you know when i was his age i don't want to do that stuff either (laughs) so right i really can't do a lot of complaining. Um, what have I been up to this week? I have been working and going to school, and I I got the the new Pokemon update, which we'll we'll talk about here in a little bit. But I, being on Android, I have the benefit of if I want to be impatient and go get something early, all I have to do is find someone hosting the APK file and install it that way. And since Niantic was rolling it out slowly, uh, which, you know, is a good thing. I don't 
fault them for it. It it helps them make sure all the kink worked out, and and that way, you know, if the first wave of people install it and it's just awful, then they can go, whoa, okay, we're not going to do this, and they can pull it and, and fix it. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason, this update was taking longer than usual. You, normally, they announce that the update is available, and then within about a day and a half or two, pretty much everyone has it. Well, that two days passed from when they announced it, and I still didn't have it. So I was like, forget this. I'm just going to go find someone with the APK file and install <laughs> it myself. Um, which, And my wife is on an iPhone, so she doesn't have that luxury. Uh, but I yeah. asked her earlier today if she had checked her app store for the update today, and she said that she hadn't. But I'm reading online that pretty much everyone should have it by now yeah. so i told her to go ahead and grab it um and on that note let's uh let's go ahead and talk specifically Sweet. about that update so um it is i noticed that the version numbers are different from android to iphone android is version number 0.37 mm-hmm. and, and i want to say the iPhone version is just that, but it's 1.37. I don't know if that's maybe Apple's got some rule about you releasing beta stuff mm-hmm. on the App Store. And so Could be. Niantic just had to, well, we'll just call it a 1.0. And, and you know, I mean, because it essentially is mm-hmm. it, it, functioning, even though there's still bugs and stuff. It, it's a functioning game. Right. So, um, but yeah, so, so that's out. And it, it came with a few things. Uh, the most controversial is that if you have a jailbroken iPhone or a rooted Android device, this version of the app now won't let you play anymore. Uh, which I don't know too many people that jailbreak their iPhone because that, that's risky and I think it voids your warranty and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But yep. I do know plenty of people who root their Android device and Google and most Android phone developers are much looser with that kind of thing. And and that's because of the nature of Android is, is open source. And it half the reason that some people even get an Android in the first place is they want to be able to tinker with it. Mm -hmm. But of course, with rooting your phone, it, it enables you to do some really cool things, but it also enables you to do some, kind of shady things if you wanted to like pirating software um and things like that and so uh niantic's the problem they were having with people who were using rooted and jailbroken phones is that people were using that to be able to cheat uh that's how um i think that's how things like pokevision and a lot of pokemon go bots were able to work was because the the app was running on uh, these hacked phones. So uh, so they, they put a stop to that, which is unfortunate for the however many people are walking around with a rooted or jailbroken phone, but uh, it's their app. Uh, we've said this before. If that's what, how they want to run their business, they are free to do so. Yep, so it's if, their thing. Yep, sure. if, you want to, if you have a rooted or jailbroken phone and you want to play the game, you either need to unjailbreak it or unroot it or go get a new phone. And and that is just life. Just uh, not I, the Samsung Note S7. Yes, because that will explode in your face. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I try to be up on, because I like technology and I try to be up on things like that. That is something that I discovered through Facebook. I, yeah. For whatever reason, in my reading about tech, that just never came up in anything that I was reading. I don't know if it's because maybe Samsung was doing a really good job for a while of keeping a lid on it. Could be. But, uh, <laughs> I did see a really cool meme uh, that said, uh, what is it? The iPhone has no headphone jack and the Galaxy is exploding. And then it, it somehow compared it to this election. Uh and it, it didn't like say that one of them was Hillary and one of them was Trump. I guess you were expected to fill in those blanks for yourself. But I know I'm a meme. I should really find it. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> I, saw, I, saw, I saw I saw a really saw. funny one. 
it said um, uh, when your phone overheats while while charging, but it's also waterproof, and it had the S7, uh, the Note 7. Um, it was plugged in, but it was uh, dunked in a uh, um, a um, pitcher of ice. That is and, fantastic. Um, so that was that gave me a good chuckle. So does it only explode when you're charging it? That's what I've heard. Whether okay. that's true or not, I don't know. All right. Well, then, so as long as you're not talking on it while it's charging, it probably won't explode in your face. Right. It'll just explode on your bedside table while you're trying to sleep. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah. Oh, my word. <clears throat> You know, I understand that these companies are big and they push out a lot of product, but sometimes, like, how does that get past you? Right. And this isn't the first time either. Uh, a while back, there were some, I think, I heard about it mostly with Apple laptops, but I think some Dell laptops were affected by it too because Sony was providing their batteries and apparently they were exploding. Actually, uh, it was a long time ago because it wasn't too long after 9-11 happened. Mm -hmm. And some of these laptop batteries were exploding on airplanes. And so, of course, with the, the stress of what had just happened in New York, anytime something went boom in an airplane, it just freaked everybody the crap out. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, let that be a lesson. Don't if you're running a major corporation that ships something with batteries. Don't neglect testing your battery. <laughs> Hurt somebody. Um, anyway, but the the big reason for this update was the buddy system. I mean, obviously, yes. nobody was eager to get an update to the, an app that would lock them out of it because they were <laughs> there. You know, <laughs> that's just not a thing. Um, so they introduced the buddy system, which is influenced strongly by uh pokemon yellow and uh the the two games that came out right after that what were they uh gold and silver yes it, you could have a pokemon following you right uh which of course is supposed to mimic the the anime because if you watch the anime pikachu ash's first pokemon is not in a pokeball in fact right. uh he refuses to go in the pokeball it's not that ash is just a swell guy and wants to let Pikachu follow him around. And Pikachu will not go in his Pokeball at all. <laughs> Which, by the way, while we're talking about that, has always confused me because in the Pokemon anime, and I, I don't know if this is addressed in the game, because to be real honest with you, most of the time I don't care about the story or what any of these people are telling me. I'm just interested in catching the Pokemon. But I know in the anime, it's said repeatedly Pokemon enjoy battling, they enjoy having trainers, and they enjoy being in their Pokeball. And Pikachu is exactly the opposite of all three of those things. He hates... Well, I guess he doesn't necessarily hate battling, but he's not terribly fond of the idea of having a trainer, at least at the beginning, and he refuses to go into Pokeball. Um, and the other question that this brings up is, if they enjoy this battling and having trainers so much... Why do they make it so difficult for me to catch them? Shouldn't they want this? I think this is a good question. That is an excellent question. We should we should be questioning whether or not my Pidgey actually wants to fight <laughs> this rat until one of them faints. Because <laughs> to me, that doesn't sound like any fun. But I'm no. not a Pokemon. What do I know? <laughs> right. Um. Mm. But Anyway, so in the in the app, uh, what I was expecting was that on your map, this Pokemon would then be following you around. Of course, uh, and I think I mentioned this on the show last time we recorded, the only person that's going to benefit is you because you can't see other people on your map. So right. it's, it's not like you're going to pass by your neighbor and notice that he's got a Dragonite following him around. He would still have to actually show you his phone. Um, but, um, the Pokemon's not actually on the map. It's just a part of your avatar icon. So down the bottom left corner of the screen, you got your avatar that, you know, you can tap it and it'll pull up stats and stuff. Next to it is whichever Pokemon that you have as your buddy and a progress bar showing you how close you are to earning them a candy, which we'll get to that in a little bit. But then if you tap your avatar, the, the, 
Pokemon that you have as your buddy appears somewhere in the picture. So, like, I've noticed that I'm Snorlax is my buddy because I want to get candies for him. And obviously Snorlax is huge, so he's just standing behind me. Mm-hmm. I've seen a picture of someone that had Magikarp as their buddy, and Magikarp was kind of flopping around in front of him. And then I've seen okay. other people that have much smaller Pokemon like Pikachu and Eevee, and yep. that Pokemon is up on their avatar's shoulder, like he's yep. right. So uh, I I read somewhere that it how it worked was that when you first assigned your buddy – that your buddy was following you, and then after you got him a few candies, he was in riding on your shoulder. And I'm like, I want to know if Snorlax will climb on my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that doesn't appear to be the case. It's it's all dependent on the size of the... And, and not, not the size that the game says your Pokemon is. Like, the, the general size of the Pokemon. Right. So, um... But uh, anyway, so candies. The the purpose of this is not just um, aesthetic. Mm-hmm. It is it serves a purpose. So the more you walk with your buddy, the more candy you'll get for that Pokemon. So Pokemon that are a little bit harder to train, such as Snorlax, or I've actually got a list here. Um, because there's there's five kilometers, three kilometers, and one kilometer, and then of course uh, Ditto and the other legendaries are unknown. We don't know how many candies uh, you get, but oh, so if you walk five, kilometers. what's that? I would I if I had to guess, once they released, I would say ten kilometers for a legendary. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but so in the five kilometer bracket, you've got things like Onyx, Magmar, Snorlax. Aerodactyl, you know, and then of course all their evolutions, if they do evolve into anything, uh, Eevee, things like that. The in the three kilometer range, you have the three starters, uh, Nidorans, Mankey, Abra, some some others. The the ghost Pokemon are in this range. Taurus and Porygon, uh, and then in the one kilometer range, you have pretty much anything that would be considered common. So Caterpie, Weedle, Pidgey, Rattata. Uh, I was commenting to Vince before we started the show that Pikachu is in this list. And at least where I live, Pikachu's not terribly common. He's actually pretty hard to come around. And you said you've never even seen one, right? Yeah, I have I have yet to see him, even on a sightings. Right. Um, have you run into one like in a gym somewhere? Or? Um, I have not actually come to think of it. So you've never seen one at all in any way in the game? No. All right. Um, yeah, and then uh, the same for Geodude, which mm-hmm. I do know that there are places where Geodude is common because I've, I've been to places and seen Geodudes all over my sightings. I've just never actually come across one to be able to try and catch it. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, Magikarp is in here. Uh, so if you if you took a Magikarp that was level or a CP one and walked four hundred kilometers, mm. you would have enough Magikarp candy to evolve it into Gyarados. Of course, you're going to catch Pokemon. Like my highest Magikarp is a hundred and seventeen or something. So. You know, I won't have to walk 400 kilometers <laughs> to mm-hmm. to get him. And then, of course, there's hatching Magikarps and I, the Magikarps mm-hmm. that I catch and the three candies they come with and things like that. So it's pretty cool. Uh, there's a list here, if you're interested in that, from a website called Heavy.com. I've never heard of it. But uh, if they've got this chart here. I'll make sure I link to it in the show notes. Um. But yeah, so I've got Snorlax as my buddy because Snorlax seems to be the Pokemon I have with the most potential. Mm-hmm. And yet, since I don't run into Snorlaxes very often, I don't have very many opportunities to level him up. So I decided to make him my buddy. But now that I know Magikarp is only one, I might go ahead and trade him out. 
Uh, oh, and that's another thing. Let's say you got your Snorlax and you've walked four kilometers with him, and then you decide to change. So you're one kilometer away from getting that candy, and you decide to change. The game will warn you about this, so you don't really have to worry, but it'll tell you that any progress you have on that candy you're working on will be gone. So the four mm-hmm. kilometers you walked with him, it doesn't get saved. It just disappears. It, yeah, so, it resets. Yeah, so you should just go ahead and walk the extra kilometer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, might as well. I mean, a kilometer really isn't that far anyway. No, it, it's really not. It's A kilometer is... It's not a mile, right? I don't even no. know what the... No, because five kilometers is three miles. I know that. Yeah. Ratio of kilometers. Google that. Miles. I am doing that right now. So one kilometer is 0.62 miles. So it's just over half a mile. Yeah, and that's that, not far. Yeah, that's nothing. If, if, you, if you have to go to the grocery store, and, th- and not just to pick up a gallon of milk, but like to do your weekly shopping... If you open Pokemon Go, I bet by the time you left the grocery store, you'd have walked half a mile. And so, oh, for sure. Um, especially if you're going grocery shopping at some place like Sam's Club or Walmart, where it's this huge lot, and you're going to have to walk the whole thing. I mean, just it's it's nothing. So just park far away and and walk the whole thing anyway. Just that that's true. And you know, I try and do that anyway because yeah. I I'm not a I'm not huge. But I'm not small by any stretch of the imagination either. So I, I do little things like let's – I mean I won't park as far away from the store door as I possibly can. But I'm not going to – I'm not going to spend five minutes of my day looking for a spot right up at the door either. You know, I, I pull into the parking lot and the first convenient looking place that I find, I park. It drives my wife nuts because – she'll she'll look up the row and go, there's like five other parking spots that are closer. And I'm like, eh. Whatever. Eh, yeah, I'm care. the same way. <laughs> so, uh, something else I got to do. I was talking to someone in my electrician class. Um, you know, because doing all this electrician stuff has gotten me way more active than I've probably ever been in my entire life. And I was talking to one of the guys and about, you know, losing weight. And I keep hearing this. He's certainly not the first person to tell me this, but he told me, man, I lost 10 pounds in one month, and all I did was cut out all my liquids except water. And I'm mm-hmm. like, ah, I want to do that so bad. But mm-hmm. then I wind up in a restaurant, and I see that sweet tea, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, I got to have some sweet tea. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, that's actually true. I have, uh, I've, I've actually heard of several different people doing that, just cutting out everything except water. Um, uh, but I'm the same way, uh, again, uh, with sweet tea. I, I cannot get enough sweet tea. Yeah. So, just, just hook it up to an IV into my arm, right? And just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, it's, it's, uh, my wife and I, we're trying to get our finances under control, and, and we've actually made a lot of progress on, in that area where we're saving money to hopefully be able to buy a house here in the next year. Mm-hmm. But, um, but one thing we were talking about was like ways we can cut back. And, and every time we get to where we talk about restaurants, it's like, you know, it's, it's not so much the going out to eat that kills us. It's the fact that we got to eat and we both buy a drink. If we, if you, if you go to like Texas, Texas roadhouse or something, and even if you just get a soda, you two sodas, that's five bucks right there. Yeah, no kidding. You could, yeah, and, and so it's like you know, if we would both get water, not only would we be healthier, but we'd save five dollars every time we went out to eat. And and we always say like, yes, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. And then we get to to Chick Fil A or wherever it is we're going, and Chick Fil A's got such good sweet tea. <laughs> and so, <laughs> then we wind up getting, we both wind up getting sweet teas and and not doing it. So right, shame on us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, it's all good. Have you uh, gotten to mess around with this buddy system a whole lot yet? Um, you know, very little. Um, I um, I pretty much immediately when I got the update, I selected Abra as my buddy, which um, I'm at. I'm right at 22 Abra candies, and he he, he needs 25 to mm-hmm. evolve up into Kadabra, and then uh, I would assume it's probably 50 up into my favorite, which is my favorite Pokemon, Alakazam. Um, um, so. I I selected him. I've walked around with him very little. Um, it's it's mm-hmm. I don't know that it's showing any progress. Um, but I just realized today that every morning when we when I work out, 
uh, we start on the track and we run a mile. And so what I need to, what I need to be doing is is um, don't let uh, strapping my phone to my arm little moments with one of those active things that matter phone slip away case thingies. Take the first yeah. and, uh, and just turn on Pokemon Go and while I run Join this mile, it can be tracking at on up. And, and that would be a convenient way to do that. But this is other than that, no, I really stories that matter really right now. Messed around with this this update. Twitter released apps for the yet. Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and the Xbox um, One. 10 NFL Thursday night games will stream on Twitter starting on September 15th. uh, To view video, viewers do not need to have a Twitter account. Additionally, no cable or satellite subscription will be necessary. uh, The Twitter app for the Apple TV has a special feature that lets a viewer see live streaming video alongside tweets on the screen. Uber really self-driving cars are now on the streets uh, of like Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So like I, I the cars on the road are specially equipped for fusions with yeah, GPS that, and LiDAR. The car won't do all the work. There will be a person in the driver's seat to take so over as necessary. Uber says the cars will be walk. available 24 actually, hours a day. Amazon introduced a new version of the Amazon Echo Dot after accidentally leaking it earlier. The cloud-connected smart speaker now costs fifty dollars um, and, so and will be available in October. The previous version cost about ninety dollars. The company will also make the Echo and Echo Dot available in the UK GPS and Germany. I wonder if Stay up to date with the latest by downloading the CNET Tech walk. Today app in the Apple hmm. App Store. Uh, I'm not saying that it wouldn't. No, no, I'm interested. No, no. When I'm you're intrigued. not stressing yeah. over finances, so if, if you, you can try that out, parenting thing to a whole new level. Because that would be. Open a new checking account with SunTrust we'll and take control of your finances. Um, all right. Uh, Samsung may have Jimmy pinpointed the problem sure with, with its uh, explosive Galaxy yeah, Note 7 phones. The Korean company so is reporting his, that it found a production error with the battery cells that push together you know, my, the negative and positive poles, which causes the battery to heat up excessively. Town, That's according to Bloomberg, Bloomberg which found the report in a filing so he, to the Korean Agency to, for Technology yeah, and Standards. Samsung has recalled all Note 7 phones after multiple reports of these bad batteries causing phones to combust. And if you have a Note 7, this is not something to be ignored. Call your carrier, find out how to get a replacement, or demand to get another phone to use in the meantime while you wait for the replacement alas, because it's not worth the risk here, to use so. it anymore. Several uh, airlines are now telling passengers we'll to not use or charge Note 7 on flights that. over um, fears of it catching fire. Our producer witnessed this herself go, the other day when she traveled Aero Mexico and flight attendants were issuing warnings about the Note 7. But because CNET you know some people are still going to use the phone, Samsung is working on a software update and that will guy, cap the battery he, from being charged past 60% to reduce the chance of it running too hot. But it's not a guarantee. Fix. One that and that software update may not come out for stuff. weeks. Mm-hmm. If you are looking to get a replacement a or you just want to pick up a cheap refurbished model when they do fix the, the Note 7, you so want to look for a blue S from, sticker on the box near the barcode. The that way you know you have a model that won't blow up. Came crashing That's it for this tech news update. I'm Bridget Carey. You can stay on top of the biggest stories at CNET.com slash update. With the bot before he got blocked out of the account. And it's a really interesting uh, article. I don't want to talk too much about it because I think it'd be beneficial With for SunTrust listening Mobile to just Touch read ID, it. You can uh, it is your checking account a little long. A password. Nothing um, to remember. Nothing and to and I say that just because we live in a world where people's attention spans aren't very good. It's not like the article's huge or anything. Uh, it's the middle of September, and The he Last Guardian about, should have been out uh, next month. It's recently been delayed until early December. Kind of However, Justin Haywald all its own. recently went down to mm-hmm. Sony and had a chance but to play the game, which I believe is the first time that anyone at GameSpot has played The Last Guardian. No, it's not the, the first time that we played anything. it. This is the build that they're showing at TGS. Kind of connect. We got to see it a little bit at E3. Had, I got a little bit like, of hands on, you know, but this is the first time when we've been able to record our game. We were able to show off how really bad we are at the game. I I not doing anything. I felt like I was taking my first so steps in a, in a new cool. body, in a new um, course, world, uh, in this game at some time. And, and to be fair, so what, what we saw of the, of the game this time, um, it, it but, uh, wasn't the beginning. This was not sure a tutorial. The this was not an intro to the world. The it was kind of throwing you into and the middle. So there lastly, were some things that you were kind of expected to already know. So as you as you watch the footage, you see that the game shows you push this button to push something, to push this button to jump. And I think those are things that you would be expected to know at that point, how to interact with the monster. A whole and, and how to just interact really with the world. Neat, interesting people. And, but and for me, jumping in right at that point, it was group. definitely a, a um, steep learning curve. But I don't think that's going to be indicative of the final game. Shop. 
So a lot of the things Zeta's that I think people are wondering Epic about are the things that they've been showing for a long so time. That includes uh, is Trico or uh, Trico, Zeta, this sort of hybrid X-I-N-A, animal that you are, I believe, guarding. Although Epic I'm yarn. curious, maybe he's um, the I'm guardian of the, the boy in the end. end. But uh, the how, how does that? She's got some, no, that could make sense. But I'm curious, like, how how was your interactions with uh, Trico? Uh, like, how, did, did it feel so like right now, he was a companion? Did you did it really feel like you weren't that familiar with him yet? Because I know the devs explained that as you develop, as you spend more time with him, you'll be able to able to understand each other a little bit better like, how did here, that experience but, um, work out she's I'm got kind of a two minds Pokemon around trico i love the design of the creature i remember when i first saw it that Pokemon i wasn't really that taken so with it you, you see him from a distance life, he has those just glowing phone, green cat eyes like the beanie it, it just looks so cool uh, to see him through shadow and then you get up close and that mix of fur and feathers as you climb onto his back and clamber over him like he's it's a really cool looking creature whatever and it feels both kind of cute and menacing and scary at the same time and you don't really know what to, uh, that, to expect out of it and it eyes, felt like at the portion eyes, where you know, i was like at in the game there was like not a, a super and, it's about, yeah. and it, yeah, it's maybe that's what they were trying to get across with with that of section it. of gameplay um, so you can call to, call to the creature it's a, it's a lot it like, like eco in that sense where you can call to your companion and they'll come towards you in this case trico might come towards you you can kind of point him towards things you can direct him he's not always going to listen right away though which is it's both frustrating because you know, you're playing a game so and you're solving puzzles that are very similar yeah, to the other from games Splatoon. in, in that you're looking at series like, that they've yeah. done before. So and, and, you kind of okay. want Splatoon. to okay. you know, get Splatoon. that puzzle. Um, like, I know how to like solve this. I'm, I'm sure if here, I go pull this thing, I it'll make the door come open. But at the same time, it does give it that personality where it's almost like a precocious child or a pet who, like a cat, who's not necessarily going to listen to you when you say, hey cat, go over there. And the cat just like looks over at the corner and goes, no. Yeah. I'm not gonna do that. That never works. You cannot tell a cat and, what to do. Uh, and Trico is, us, is a mix of the yeah. different kinds of animals. I, the strongest I one, been able to work and out I think it's mannerisms and the way that it moves, is a cat. So it's just like a weird you know, they'll get dog like, bird oh, you can get looking a year, uh, cat creature. So it's somewhat aloof, maybe. It's aloof in some ways. But, I don't have and I feel like this is another thing that just takes a lot of... You have to spend a lot of time in the game to get the hang of. But the way that he reacts to things around you is kind of how you know what to do in the game. So it's, the show I don't think you're going to get as blatant hits as, as I got it. Sure. Stuff. Both things are popping up on screen saying do this, and, and I had developers yeah. around me who were okay. helping out with like, well, if you... You would have already learned that if you grab this oh, item, this is how you, you kind of use that. If you watch uh, Trico, you though, he'll, he looks around at his environment. So he'll, he looks up. There's one part where he's um, looking up I'd at like the, the ceiling and, and a thing that you have to light. But, um, and when you light that, that then he jumps up on there because he's like attracted to the light. He wants yeah. to, to be closer to that. Did, and then you if you ride on his back when he jumps up there, then that gets you to this higher ledge and you're able to solve the puzzle that way. Okay. So did maybe your anticipation or your hype, did you feel like finally picking this controller up and playing the game like, like wow, delivered what you were expecting. It's becoming not, more, and maybe, more geeky. How is this different from Fumito Ueda's past works, um, uh, Eco and Shadow I found of the Colossus? On Amazon, the years, I think, have in some ways diluted both, what this experience games. could have been. I can't because tell coming if it's an Amazon Ico, thing or if it's Shadow of the Colossus. Like, just two because it, amazing it's not experiences just that tell you so much about the world and how to play the game without ever being very explicit. You are just kind of forced to figure things out and so uh, and it's hard to get a feel for that if you're for not whatever going to the reason, very beginning though, it's because i think a lot of the the tutorial like elements from eco and shadow of the classes in particular in fact, are very subtle so you have those elements in the last guardian as well where there's a lot going on in this world as and far it's as not I can clear tell, what all of it means you know what, and you kind of want to explore. You want to as far as I can answers tell, to these things and i don't think you're going to get answers to everything separately but is at the, the same case. time, it also feels like it borrows like maybe a little too much from from for, for me in particular, a lot from Eco because now you're you're okay, back so in a castle and I see Steel things that are very pack. familiar. I I don't okay, think it's the it same castle, exclusive. but it also doesn't feel quite as and fresh as see, new it as, both Pokemon Sun as and Moon something that was is un- surprising and that case, I didn't know what I was getting into. I felt very familiar, which is necessarily a negative thing. But I you know after waiting all this time after having played through Eco and Shadow. The Colossus, I, you know, I kind of wanted another experience that's just going to 
surprise me. Yeah, uh, so, so one of the things that is pretty particular like about a, Nueva's games in the past is the controls have been somewhat floating, right? They're, they're just, not, it's not this, this really precise thing. You're sort of case, wrestling with a very organic uh, feeling character. How, how does that translate yeah, no. to especially Last Guardian? Especially the, uh, from some the, of the stuff the I saw, map. you're walking on pretty precarious okay, yeah, land so the, and there's structures. Actually a picture. Yeah, you if do you have go to be to very, it, very uh, careful Amazon. with the way that you move your character. Because he does make an open wall, and we've seen that in the other games, where if you're walking along the ledge, if you're not careful, you can just walk off that ledge, and it can either kill you or send you back to the beginning of a puzzle. But there's a picture here of the case opened up. And but so you can see where the at the same time, go, after having played the, so many games that have such tight controls, the game uh, I'm a little go, bit hesitant and the little to be picture to, to feel Alola like this is going to be the finished product. Like I hope so, that the controls um, have some yeah, more a, work that's going to be done to them. Neat little, all right, thanks, Justin, for all that new info. The rest of so us anyway, will have a chance I, uh, to play the game in about three months' time. I'm hoping it's worth the wait. What are you hoping? Let us know in the comments below. Do you think the Last Guardian will live up to its prolonged development cycle? Otherwise, stay tuned to Gamespot.com for more coverage of the Last Guardian. So I know. Approaches. I kind of want to go ahead and get this steel book thing, but I understand it's ten dollars or more now. <laughs> okay. I have a feeling we're going to wind up uh, settling for buying them individually. Also, I don't know if this matters, but Pokemon Moon has a bestseller logo next to it, and Pokemon Sun does not. So my guess is, at least just based on what I see here on Amazon, if you want to buy the With one Suntrust that Mobile Touch it ID, seems like you can not everyone is running out to go get, a password. Uh, nothing buy Sun. To remember, nothing to buy forget. You'll just have the same one everyone else has. Yeah, what's the fun in that? Right. Uh, also, just throwing it out there. Thank the heavens that Overwatch's first season of competitive uh, mode games, is over. You do get 20% no more off. floundering around in the 40s for me anymore. That, that's all. We can finally games. begin so anew. I actually pre-ordered. Okay. I went ahead and put the, Crap. the dual pack Well, in my it's not all about competitive mode. Um, which, Blizzard has course, introduced a bunch of new changes later, in the latest Overwatch wife, patch, as well as balance it's tweaks to a like number of different heroes, including both the Shimada brothers. Um, so here are the yeah, five so biggest changes of that. in Season 2 of Overwatch. Titanfall 2 and that new Sonic Mania that's coming out next year. Sweet. In last season's yeah, competitive mode, players were assigned skill one. ratings from 1 to 100, which would have been great uh, if 60 was considered the best of the best. To be current but now the, the scale releases, goes all the way so up like to 5,000. Bigger numbers are always better, I can assure you that. And this season, players are assigned to tiers, ranging from bronze, silver, gold, all the way up to Grandmaster. Yeah, it'll be nice to dream about getting that many points. But as a proud OK player, <laughs> what I'm excited <laughs> about is that you won't drop out of a range. Set that to automatic. Uh, yeah, I usually do because I uh, I use Prime quite a bit, and and not even like, I rarely watch anything on because you get Prime Video with it and you get Prime Music with it. I don't use any of that stuff really, but I. For a while, I went without Amazon Prime thinking, you know what? I can save myself the money. I don't really need it. But then I was running into all these things where, like, I need an aux cable. Well, I can go to Walmart and get an aux cable <laughs> and spend $10. Right. Or I can buy a pack of 20 of them on Amazon for 7 bucks, and it'll be right. <laughs> Exactly. So, so I was just like, yeah, I went ahead and re-upped my Prime and... I don't know what I would do without it. I guess I would be spending way too much money like a chump at Walmart. That's <laughs> um, all right. I've run out of things to talk about. You got anything you want to add, Vince? I, I don't think so. I think I'm good. You think you're good? All right. So, well, uh, if, you're, uh, if you're with Team Mystic and you see a bearded guy in a truck playing Pokemon Go, that's our Jimmy Bones. Let him know we miss him. You know, flag him we down. Need him. We need him here. We need that crazy accented, kind of <laughs> weirdly, ang weirdly angry about certain things, gentlemen on our show. No, he's a good guy. I don't. Yes. I'm not trying, not trying to disparage him. Just a little friendly rubbing. Um. All right. Well, let's move on to the plugs. Where can we find yeah. you on the internet, Vince? Uh, you can find me facebook.com slash Vince Chapman writes. You can follow me there. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Chapman underscore Vince. Sweet. You got anything you're writing? Um, currently, no. Today, I just finished a review for uh, geeksundergrace.com on uh, Aaron Gillespie's newest album, Out of the Badlands. 
mm-hmm. which I was super stoked for. Um, other than that, um, just kind of looking ahead after that one finished, I, I, I try not to take on too many writing projects at one time. So, um, yep. uh, so after that one's finished, I am now looking for something new to write at the moment. So I'm in between projects. Sweet. Uh, you can find me at facebook.com slash it's now Patrick Allen Ryan. It was above par productions. I felt like, cause it was, uh, I can't remember if it was HCP or if it was huge cow patty, but then I felt like that was like, I liked that it was silly, but I wanted it to be slightly more serious. So I changed it to above par productions and then I ran it like that for a few months and it just, since it, it was me, but it wasn't named after me, I felt very disconnected from it. So I changed it to my name. So it's facebook.com slash Patrick Allen Ryan. It's pretty simple. Uh, but it's still largely the same content that I put on there. You can find me on Twitter at Patrick Proper. I also recently, because of something that happened on an episode of Original Gamers Podcast, resurrected an old Twitter account of mine called, and I... Uh-oh. I don't want to mess it up. It's <laughs> uh, it's salty luchadoric is the title oh, of the, sweet of the Kev this character that I kind of created. Um, <laughs> this is not. Yeah, I can't. I'm pretty sure if because salty luchadoric didn't fit in the Twitter name, so I'm pretty sure it's at salty luchadork. So that's s s a l t y. L U C H A D O R K. Richard Doric was, you know, because of Patrick, so the ick at the end, or the rick at the end, that didn't fit. So um, basically, I just be salty about things. Um, not yeah, you. I try not to be mean. Just, you know, yeah, yeah. So, uh, in fact, the, your, my profile picture, me wearing this luchador mask that uh, Shelly, who streams with Geeks Under Grace, bought for my son, but it doesn't fit him, so I wear it. Uh, but it's a picture of me wearing that, and I'm standing with a copy of five over a garbage can. So, yeah, it's just little silly things like that. Um, <laughs> but I've, I've revived that. So you can go follow me on that at, at, at Salty Luchador. Um, and then, of course, I host the Original Gamers Podcast at ogcast.podbean.com. And I run events, uh, esports events, for a little group called Cross Forge Gaming. We have a Hearthstone tournament that is free, and that is coming up on September 23rd. So if you play Hearthstone and you want to come compete, there's, there's no, like, prize or anything. It's just for fun. Uh, but you can go to crossforgegaming.com. And then I'll take you to our Facebook page, and you can find information about how to sign up for that tournament there. Uh, if you don't play Hearthstone, it's free, and you don't need a monster computer to run it, because it's just a card game. And uh, yes, you can spend money on it, but I haven't spent a dime on it yet, and I don't plan to. And I still have fun with it. Yeah, most of the time when I get paired up with someone online, I get my rear end kicked in, because they've spent money on cards that I don't have. But it's still fun. So I encourage you to go check that out. Um, and that's it. It's another episode in the bag. Sweet. We did it. So thanks for joining us. Hopefully we'll be back next week. And hopefully we'll have all three of us. We'll have another good show for you. So we'll see you all next week. Have a good one.